One of the most commonly asked questions in building an Excel model is, how do I create a drop-down list for a cell? Along those lines, there's also a desire among Excel users to limit or lock down cells to restrict what the user can enter. Whether you have an interest in doing either of these to make your worksheet more user-friendly, or if you're doing it because you want to make your worksheet more robust, data validation is a tool we're going to use to restrict entry in cells and build drop-down lists. In our exercise file, we're going to work on the data validation tab. Looking at our table, we've got five columns of data. And because of data entry errors, we want to apply data validation to the columns of our table. For location and item, we want to limit the cities to choices from a drop-down list. For the cost of an item, we want to make sure that the number entered is greater than zero. For items sold, we want to ensure that the item sold value is entered as a whole number and greater than zero. So the first thing we need to do is set up our drop-down list for our values. This is actually a list of values you're going to put somewhere else on your worksheet. I recommend starting the list on row one, but in a column far to the right of where you're going to be doing any data entry or seeing anything. So we've already set up our list, and if we go over to cell AA1 and AC1, we have two separate lists here. We have a list for location, and we have a list for items. So we're going to build a drop-down list, so it'll select from these three locations, and for items, we'll build it to go off the items. Now let's do command down arrow, go to the bottom of our table, and we're going to put our data validation on cell A130. From the data tab, we're going to go and click the validate command. And now you see in our little dialog box, right now we have three different tabs, top settings, input message, and error alert. And we'll look at those in a minute. Right now, the validation for the cell is going to allow just any value. So what we want to do is we want to have a list. And so now over to the right, we have ignore blank and in cell dropdown. We want to leave those checked. The ignore blank will let us have a blank value in that cell. And in cell dropdown is what actually creates the dropdown list when we choose our list. So for source, let's click the little reference editor. And we'll navigate back over to cell AA1. And for our range there, we want it to be AA2 to AA4. And we'll hit Enter. And then click OK. And now if we scroll back over, the bottom of our list now, the next entry, we have a drop-down list. We can click that drop-down and we get Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Queens. So I could choose one of those. And enters it for me. Now another neat thing is that even though we have a drop-down list, I can actually type in the value. Now what if I type in something that's not there? Excel will actually do data validation. In addition to having a nice little drop-down, it says the value you entered is not from our required list. So it will not let us make a choice that isn't part of our list. Well now let's try to build a drop-down for the items. So let's go over to B130, and we're going to click the data validation. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video here and see if you can create your own. All right, now that we've created one of our own, let's just walk through it again together. So to create a validation dropdown, we'll click on the validation box. And instead of allowing any value, we want to allow list. And then for the source, we're going to navigate over to our list of items and click OK. And now we have a drop down that has the list of all our items as well cakes, cookies, croissants, cupcakes, muffins, and whoopie pies. Let's explore a little bit more of the data validation tab. We've seen kind of how to make a list, but now that I'm still on B130, let's click that validation tab and let's go to the input message. Show input message when cell is selected. That check marks is selected. Now let's put something in the title. Let's just type in items, put a colon, and for our input message, let's type in a friendly message. Please choose one of our products 
for the items. And we'll click OK. OK, we just added that to B130. So watch what happens when I go into that cell, when I click on that cell or move my active cell to it. I get a little help screen that says items. Remember that was the title. And we get a little friendly reminder. Please choose one of our products for the items. Again, that is what's on the input message of the data validation tab. See the title is items and the input message appears in the rest of the box. Now the last thing we want to do for the validation tabs is go over to the error alert. And this is where we can tailor the error message the user receives if they try to do something that's not in our list. Okay, by default it says show error alert after the invalid data is entered. Let's go ahead and put a title for our error message and we're going to say approved items. And for our error message we're going to just type in sorry but you must select an item from our drop-down list of approved items and click OK. Well now when we're in this cell let's try to type in something that's not there like waffles and we'll hit enter and now our error message comes back and says approved items sorry but you must select an item from our drop-down list of approved items and it looks really professional. It looks like an Excel generated error message, which it really is. So we'll go ahead and hit cancel and it goes back to whoopie pies. Let's look at the other options on the error alert though. Right now we have a stop and approved items. We also have a warning, which will just give us a warning. Sorry, but you must select an item from our drop-down list of approved items. Do you want to continue? If we click yes, Excel will go ahead and let us enter that item if it's a warning. It'll still ask us if we're sure we want to do that, yes or no, but it will let us go ahead and override that list by clicking yes. The last option on the error alert goes all the way to informational. In the informational one, we might say, didn't choose an item from our approved list and click OK and now when I enter something in that cell it just gives me an information you didn't choose an item from our approved list OK click OK and it lets me enter it well now that we've done a couple of drop downs for text values let's go ahead and do some numeric validations so for the cost per item sold, we just want to ensure that that's a positive number and it can be a decimal. So we'll go to our validation rules for cost per item and go to settings. And instead of allowing any value, we're going to allow a decimal value. And data can be between a minimum and a maximum. We have lots of other choices, not between, equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than. We want it to be greater than or equal to, actually it has to be greater than, zero. And we'll click OK. And now I can enter 5.6, that works. I can enter 2.5. I can type in Tom. Oops, can't do that. Because I put validation on itself to just accept numbers. Value must be a decimal greater than zero. So I'll go ahead and retry that. What if I do negative one? Same thing, decimal greater than zero. So here's a case where we put validation on a cell, but it doesn't necessarily have a drop down. It's just a check of data on our Excel sheet. Let's go over and see if we can figure out how to do items sold. We want that to be a whole number greater than zero. So that's going to be a whole number. And that too is going to be greater than zero. Click OK. And now what if we put in 4.5? Nope, it's got to be a whole number. So how about four? Again, negative two, doesn't work. We've got a validation rule on there. So now we've built some pretty useful data validation rules. They're really good, but they're only on these four cells right now. A130 through D130. We might want to copy those to our whole list and even beyond that. So 
what we can do in Excel is we have all these different ways to do pay special where you can also pay special and just paste the validation rules that are on a cell. So let's highlight A130 to D130 and do a copy. And now we'll highlight the rest of that table. And we'll go down to right click and do a paste special. And this time, we don't want to paste values or formats. We want to paste the validation rules. And now every cell in our table has that same validation rule. It has a little input help when I click on an item. Can't put in text values on cost per item. Again, all we had to do was copy and paste special validation rules. So hopefully now you've seen the benefits of the built-in data validation features. On the surface, it's the go-to tool to use to put a drop-down list on a cell. But as we've just seen, it can be much more. You can use the validation rules to make your data entry much more robust and use the message to make your interface much more user-friendly.